A good Erev Shabbos, South Africa. My name is Rabbi Mike Moskowitz. My pronouns are he, him. Thank you so much for the invitation to share some thoughts with you this evening on allyship of spiritual practice, the mitzvah of being an ally. I am calling currently uh, from the Upper West Side of New York City. I hope that this finds you and your loved ones well. For me, like for most people, allyship and advocacy comes from some sort of personal experience. For me, it was about five years ago when someone in my family said to me, I'm not a girl, I'm a boy. I, being a cis straight male, had never thought about my gender identity since I was a kid and told which bathroom to use. So when I said, how do you know? It was framed from my understanding of my gender identity based on my body. And so he said, I just am. And it took me a few weeks to realize that being cis, not trans, is just a function of the limitations that my gender awareness has. And once I realized that I knew that I just didn't know, I was able to be really quite generative and supportive as an ally. So the first rule is that the lived life experience of somebody in a traditionally marginalized segment of society is simply unrecognizable to those of us of privilege. So when we realize that we don't know, we realize that we need to listen a lot more to understand better. So the first part is to recognize that no one's life is ever hypothetical. And especially as rabbis and clergy, we think a lot in the world of ideas about things in theoretical spaces. What happens if a person gets out of jail of Yom Kippur and only has enough time to perform one mitzvah? What mitzvah should they do? But we're not meant to answer questions, we're meant to answer people. And the people who are in difficult situations, it's not just enough to preserve the life because people's lives matter, but the quality of those lives also matter. Human dignity as, is as important as saving a life. So in Hebrew, we have a word for ally. We often translate it as friend, uh, but the word chaver actually means to attach oneself. The name comes from the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, in discussing the parts of the Mishkan, the tabernacle. The vavei hamishkan, the hooks, that were used to attach the curtains to the pillars model for us the way in which we're meant to be an ally. In the Hebrew alphabet, the sixth letter, the Vav, which gets its name from these hooks, physically looks like a hook in that it's a vertical letter with a little bit of a thing on the top, and it functions as the conjunction and it connects this and that. So the ally, like the word machaber, the author connects uh, ideas and words, thoughts to paper. Something is attached to the ground that's mechuber lekarko. So when the Mishnah teaches karan lechachaver that we're meant to acquire for ourselves a friend, what it really means for us is don't live a life that's uninvested in the well-being of another. Being an ally is a function of taking the resources that one person has to be able to then provide for the needs of another. Each one of us is uniquely suited. The result of our one-of-a-kind upbringing in life to be able to help those around us. For some, it's a function of proximity to the need. For other, it's a, others, it's a function of the resources we have. So on one end of the spectrum, we have an awareness that the brokenness of the world both invites and obligates us to show up to fix it. At the other end of the spectrum is, God forbid, a detachment from that sense of res- communal responsibility. And we read about it in this week's partial. Uh, Kairach represents machlekes, separation, division, Although he claims that all lives are holy and therefore there's no reason to have any sort of separation, uh, the truth is he's really just in it for for his own glory. And that unfortunately is very common even today. God, the one thing that we know about God is that God is one. God is free from division. God is free from separation. Machlik is separation is bad. Um, To such an extent that on the day that the waters were separated, the Torah doesn't say that it was good. That day is missing the key tev. There are different explanations for why. It gets a, an additional key tev on the next day. But uh, the commentators are bothered that if separation is so bad, so why when the waters are split, doesn't it say key tev? But when dark and light are split, it does say key tev. It does still say that it's good. So the commentators offer a variety of answers. But one that's relevant for us is that darkness and light are mutually exclusive. Because there's actually even a deeper conversation about whether or not darkness even exists or it's just the absence of good. God responds to the initial darkness by being the light and asks for us to reciprocate. 
So for things that cannot coexist, it's good that there's separation. We actually Saturday night have a, an order of separation uh, because sometimes things cannot coexist. But water, uh, like parents and children and like community, there's a certain surface tension that actually brings us together. And so it's unnatural to have that kind of separation. It's actually one of the reasons why uh, on uh, Monday is the Shir the, the song of the day, is actually written uh, for the children of Kairach as a corrective act uh, of reunification. So when things separate, when they're meant to be together, there's an act of unholiness. We as Jews are responsible not just for our actions, but also for our inactions. And so in thinking about division and separation, taking uh, classes or separation of prioritizing the well-being of a certain group of people over another is itself an act of unholiness and ungodliness. If we want uh, change to happen, we need to make it personal. And the goal of all of this is to feel within our relationship with God, if we want to see God as a parent, then we need to be able to take care of all of God's children as our siblings. We see this deep within our tradition um, as a proof text when Joseph is seen by his brothers from afar, the verse tells us, they sought to do him harm. It's much easier to dehumanize somebody from a distance, which means if we want to uh, be able to uh, break down these prejudices, which are so easy to have against people and things that we've never met or experienced, we need to get to know people. Allyship is awkward. I am the scholar in residence for trans and queer Jewish studies at the world's largest uh, LGBT synagogue, CBST, here in New York City. And I'm not trans and I'm not queer. Um, but as awkward as it is to speak in these spaces, it's much more awkward to be silent. Um, additionally, when, when people are dehumanized, it's awkward to name that and to recognize our role uh, in being complicit in that. Uh, the Talmud tells us the way in which God differs from people in that um, God created one person and uh, mass produced in a mint, uh, each one of us in God's image, but we all look different. When we create something in a mint, each coin is identical to the one before and after. And so on a deeper level, I think what that tells us is that if we want to understand God, we need to understand the diversity of God's creations. We're able to see the holiness of the divine through uh, the varied manifestations of God's creations. In fact, the, the Talmud tells us that it's even greater um, to meet God's creatures than it is to even meet God's face. And the Chassam Sefer gives a wonderful parable about a parent uh, who would much rather not be invited to a family reunion, knowing that all of the, the children are getting along and are invited and are gonna be celebrating together, than to get an invitation and show up and to realize that some of the children were not invited. And that's the situation that we have right now. Um, obviously, gender identity and sexual orientation are very different, and the verses in the Torah that speak to them are um, speak to different struggles of homophobia and transphobia within society. Um, God uh, is the source of all gender. We're created uh, in the image of a God that has gendered attributes but doesn't have bodies, doesn't have any sort of body. Um, and so if we think about the divine revelation as God's coming out speech, Right, where God lets us know who God is. Um, and it was in that place of tremendous unity and solidarity. Uh, that's really what we need now to be able to take God out of the closet. We forced God very much to be hidden because it's not a safe space for God to be out as God's self because we see God sees the way that we treat each other. That's why God doesn't have a house anymore. The temple in Jerusalem uh, was destroyed because we couldn't get along. God refuses to show up at God's house uh, when we exclude people from it. So as you're sitting in a, a virtual sanctuary right now, I understand that the people are not getting together physically. It's a reminder that if we wanna be able to be in relationship with God as the most authentic and genuine version of ourselves, we need to protect and create that literal sanctuary for people that religion unfortunately um, has come to exclude people uh, from being in relationship with God as opposed to creating a scaffolding to support the unique um, and authentic individualized relationship that we're each able to have. And so in reading Parshas Kairach, uh, we're reminded what happens when there's separation. Um, whenever we try to prioritize some people as being more human than another, invariably others are dehumanized. 
So it's a wonderful time to remind ourselves about the holiness uh, of unity, especially in this time of separation. It's worth thinking about how we're able to reconnect to people and to help, um, you know, prop them up. There's a beautiful allusion, again, to this idea of, of, of being an ally um, and the letter Vav in two words, which are spelled with the same letters in the same order. One is Neshama, one is Neshama. One, of course, means life and vitality and breath soul and spirit and one is used in in, in the psalms and in the prophets to mean barren and uh, something that's devoid of any sort of life and so of course the rabbis are curious how if the world was created through speech and the hebrew alphabet and the names of things represents their represent the essence how can two things which are so opposite be spelled not only with the same letters but in the same order the only difference is that one has a kamatz and one has a patach one has a, f a flat vowel and then one has uh, the perpendicular as well. Because in reality, the difference from a person feeling alive and filled with life and community and, and vitality and a person feeling barren, empty and void is often just a little support. And so that's the mitzvah of being an ally. The world is broken, we broke it. We're in partnership with God to be able to come and fix it. So when we stand up for those whose voice is silenced, uh, for those who don't have the same rights or privileges, then we're able to partner not just with the individual, but we're also able to partner with the divine. So I hope that this finds everybody well, and I hope that this parasha in particular uh, provides some spiritual nourishment and a reminder of what happens um, in the deleterious effects of separation and uh, that power when harnessed properly to be able to create spaces where people are able to manifest the unique aspects of God. It brings us so much closer to being able to have not just a reunification of our people, but also a safe space for God to be out. Thank you all so very much and have a wonderful Shabbos.